So plant-based foods can be addicting just like junk food can be addicting. Just because something is plant-based, just because something is vegan, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a food that we just wanna eat in abundance and that it's just like a free-for-all food. And so one of the foods that fall into this category, a plant-based food, is your plant-based fats. So things like nut butters. So this peanut butter is freaking delicious. I love peanut butter. I love almond butter. I love all kinds of nut butters. And the thing with nut butters is they're very, very addicting. So even though it's plant-based, even though it's made with good ingredients, even though it is a healthy fat, it isn't something that I just wanna load up on and eat in abundance because when you start eating a lot of high fat foods, it sort of like throws off your body's natural hunger and fullness cues because it sort of like triggers this like very um, like addictive response in us where we just wanna keep eating it and eating it and eating it. And so just to put this into perspective, two tablespoons of peanut butter is going to be almost 200 calories, 190 calories. So I could have two tablespoons of peanut butter for 200 calories, or I could have these three oranges for 200 calories. And honestly, I'm just kind of guessing. I really don't know how many calories are in these oranges, but if anything, it might actually be a little less than 200. It might even be like 150, maybe like 50 calories in orange. But either way, roughly about the same amount of calories. And what do you think is gonna fill you up more and make you feel more full and satiated and satisfied? Obviously the oranges, because you're gonna get so much more water content. Whereas with peanut butter, you're not getting any bulk to go with those calories. So I consider nut butters to be a very um, addicting food. And not just nut butters, but also like regular just nuts and seeds in their whole form. Even though it's a whole plant-based food, and it's a healthier fat, it's still not something that you just wanna like eat in abundance and include all the time and uh, just kind of make it a free for all food, right? Because I used to make the mistake when I first started on a plant-based diet, thinking that anything that was plant-based was like a free food, you know, and that I could just eat it in abundance even if it was plant-based. So plant-based was like the only criteria I used to decide if I was gonna like, you know, just eat as much as I wanted to or not. When in reality, there are plant-based foods that we still need to limit and watch our intake of. And nuts and seeds are one of those foods. Pecans are very addicting. If I were to just sit down and eat some pecans, eat a snack of pecans, I could easily eat a cup of pecans. And let's just see what that would be, a cup of pecans, let's just see. A quarter of a cup is 200 calories. So if I were literally to sit down and just kind of eat and snack on pecans mindlessly without realizing it, I could very easily eat like 800 calories worth of pecans, right? And so that's where like, trail mixes and you know these like snacky uh, fruit nut mixes that you see at the stores like these granola mixes things like that can get uh, very addicting and they're just not a good food to have around or to include because you've got not only do you have the nuts but you've also got like a lot of added sugar and things like that and those trail mixes and stuff and it just becomes a very addicting food so just because it's plant-based doesn't mean it's um, a free for all food and nuts and seeds and nut butters are one of those foods. And I am hungry, so let's go ahead and eat breakfast. So the next food that can be very addicting, even though it's plant-based, you still want to be very mindful of it, and that is these added sugars. So even though things like coconut sugar are going to be unrefined and it is going to be less processed, it's still going to be calorie dense, it's still going to be very addicting. So anything that you add coconut sugar to, it's just gonna become one of those foods that might trigger you to want to eat more and more and more. Same thing with maple syrup. It's the same situation. Now I still use maple syrup and I still use coconut sugar. I just don't get crazy with them. I don't eat them like, you know, in abundance. It's not a food that I'm just gonna like pour over everything because if I do put, um, a, I'll, I've done this before, I noticed that whenever I have coconut sugar with my apples or coconut sugar with my bananas or whatever, I tend to end up eating more and more of that food because the sugar just sort of has like an addicting quality. So it's better to get your calories from the whole fresh fruit, from your starchy vegetables and things like that, rather than just like a bunch of added sugars. So even though these are healthier sugar options, you still want to be mindful of how much you're using. So um, I you know, try not to go over, most days, honestly, I don't even have 
have added sugar. But if I am going to have an added sugar um, in a day, I try to like not go over two tablespoons of that sugar in a day. So especially like with things like um, oatmeal cookies and things like that, when you have, you know, your oat flour along with your added dates and a lot of this sort of added sugar. I mean, I can eat a whole tray of oatmeal cookies. It's sort of like a trigger food. So you just kind of have to be careful of that. We're in the pantry right now, and I know that the lighting is a little weird, but I wanted to go ahead and show you the third plant-based food that can be addicting, and we have to be careful of it, and that is the whole grain flours. So right here, I have just regular rolled oats, which are totally fine to eat, and it's okay to eat oat flour as well, but when you start including any type of gluten-free whole grain flour, whether that is like, you know, um, brown rice flour, millet flour, um, oat flour, things like that. Now you're starting to include these breads and um, pancakes and cookies and crackers and cakes and cupcakes. And you start to kind of include more of the pastries and the baked goods when you start including whole grain flours. Now I have nothing against um, gluten-free whole grain flours or foods made with gluten-free whole grain flours. It's just that they can get more addicting because they are going to be a bit more calorie dense. And typically those types of foods are going to have more of your added fats, more of your added sugars. And so it just gets more and more addicting, more and more calorie dense. So you have to be kind of mindful of that. Bear is literally like at the door of the pantry wanting in because his food is in here. <laughs> And this is really the case with millet bread for me. I think millet bread can get kind of addicting. So let me grab the millet. Okay, so this right here is the millet. And millet is totally fine to include, but when you grind it up and you make a flour out of it, now you're just making it a bit more calorie dense and it is gonna be a bit more addicting. So like there is a millet bread recipe that I love. I really like to grind this millet into a flour and make a really like tasty bread out of it. And it's so good, but it does, I can tell like whenever I eat this millet bread, it just, you know, it has a bit of an addicting factor to it. So I like to eat it along with, you know, some legumes, some potatoes, something else, some vegetables, something else to kind of fill me up and give me some bulk. Because when you eat these types of foods that have been like ground into a flour, they just, it's kind of hard to stop yourself from eating them, especially if you've struggled with like food addiction and like binge eating and stuff like that before. So a good rule of thumb to remember is the more whole a grain is, the less addicting it's going to be and the less you're going to be able to eat of it and the more processed it is the more ground it is like when we start grinding you know millet into a millet flour or oats into oat flour then the more calorie dense it becomes the more addicting it kind of becomes and the more we tend to eat of that thing so just kind of keep that in mind so when you're including any gluten-free whole grains or anything like that just try to make them as whole as you can in terms of like not being triggered into wanting to just keep eating them and eating them and eating them because so often I did this when I first started out, you know, I was plant-based and I was like, oh my gosh, it's a free food, right? It's like, it's plant-based. So I'm just going to include as much of these as possible. And honestly, these are on a totally different level than the um, fats and the sugars that we talked about earlier. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying like, you can't have these, like you absolutely can. Like I wouldn't recommend eating like half a loaf of millet bread or a whole tray of oatmeal cookies. At least in my case, I noticed that I had much better results when I focused on fruits, vegetables, leafy greens, and starchy vegetables over the whole grains and the whole grain flours and the breads and the pastries and things like that. I am hot in here. Whew. I am sweating in here. It's so hot. There's like no airflow in here. And for a mid-afternoon snack, I'm having this container of cantaloupe. It is now dinner time and I'm going to have some leftover potatoes that I had from the other day. And those potatoes aren't going to be quite enough, so I'm going to go ahead and reheat some sweet potatoes so I'll have like a little kind of golden potato sweet potato combo along with the salad so let's get to cooking I'm just gonna line a pan here with parchment paper and I'm gonna put those leftover potatoes their leftover steamed golden potatoes onto this pan I'm gonna put that into the ninja I really like doing this it gives the potatoes a nice like hash brown flavor Next, I'm just gonna warm up two sweet potatoes in a non-stick pan on medium heat, get them nice and warm, and I'll have that along with my golden potatoes as well. Mm -hmm. 
And here is my complete meal. You'll see my sweet potato bowl. I also have my golden potato bowl. And then I have my salad. And that was my entire dinner. And so what I like to do is I'll dip my potato into a little bit of cashew cream sauce and then I'll get a little bit of salad and I'll have my potato along with my salad. So lettuce and potatoes go really great together. They are a really good combo. And if you like this video, click the video on the screen. This is another video that I think you'll like and I'll see you there.